Hello, my name is Odyssey, and welcome back to Pillars of Eternity, episode 5, I think. It's episode 5? Yeah, it, it is episode 5. Okay, great. And uh, what happened in the last episode? We met up with Edir. Look at that hat. I forgot about the hat. That's amazing. Let's have a closer look at this. Oh my god. I wonder if you can enchant it. Is there... Can you enchant the duelist's hat so there's actually use for it? It doesn't look like you can, that's a shame. Uh, oh, actually, I can change the colours as well. Oh, that's brilliant. I'm getting very distracted by the hat. Um, yes, welcome back to episode 5. F whoa, yeah, 5, yeah. I need to stop questioning that. Uh, and the last yeah. thing we did was pretty much everything in the Gilded Vale. We uh, we overran a little bit in the last episode trying to get everything done, but now we are just about ready to set off into the the great unknown. And uh, I believe last time we decided we were going to set out in the vague direction of Kednoir and see if we can meet up with this uh, this right. watcher, Meowold. So let's see if we can do just that. First of all, I'm going to get my formation ready. Uh, just make sure that, yes, okay, so Edir is ahead of uh, Odyssey there. So that, that is as it should be, although, yeah, okay, fair enough. They are they are moving in that formation. It didn't look like, like it was for a second. Cows! Those are very big cows. Is that, is that in proportion? I guess it is in proportion, yeah. They just look very big for some reason. Nice detail. Anyway... Let's, uh, shall we? No, actually, let's let's head on downwards. So let's go down here somewhere, down here. And we shall see where our next, our next area to explore is. It's called Magran's Fork. So it will take you four hours to complete your journey to, uh, from Gilded Vale to Magran's Fork. So let's do that. Okay, great. So... Uh, this looks like a, a fairly large area to explore, so I guess we should get underway as quickly as possible. Uh, I cannot remember what we find in Magrand's Fork. Well, I, I remember one thing that we find in Magrand's Fork, but I'm not going to uh, to spoil it for those of you who don't know. But uh, but the rest of it, I have no idea. Hello, Folmar. How are you doing? Ah, uh, oh, hello there. Begging your pardon, but you gave me a good fright. I thought I heard something rustling through the brush. Suppose that was just you. Silly of me. Yes, it was, Falmar. Don't suppose you happen to need some supplies? I thought I'd make my way over to Mad... Madder... How do you say that? Madmer... <laughs> Madmer Bridge. But I'm starting to think I'd be better off heading back to town and getting a few more folks together. Better safe than sorry, right? Say, did you hear something? Okay. Uh... Oh, there we go. Okay, great. So, we have a young wolf. Let's see what Edir is is, uh, is made of here. The first time we see him in action. So let's let's try and knock down the young wolf. I, I imagine it's more than just the one wolf. So... I think I'll just... I'll leave Odyssey there. Oh, no. Come on. Leave Odyssey there. And he can be ready to... To attack any sure. other... Let's go! Any other wolves that come around? So I'm not sure if there are any. It might just be this one. It might be because it's easy mode, I guess. There we go. The entire screen shook at that arrow. That was that was pretty incredible. I'm now wondering if I should yeah. if I should push the difficulty back up to normal instead of easy because I don't know. Maybe ooh, there, there we go. Maybe this is maybe this is a bit too easy considering I can transform it into, into an enormous bear that can two shot pretty much everything that has come across so far. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Oh, there. Wow. Okay. Lots of wolves. Let's uh, get Edir to knock down one of those wolves. And let's cast a spell. What should we cast? Paralyzing all but the most fearsome of animals. Causing pierce damage over time, reducing the concentration. And see, this is this was the reason why I didn't want to take Aloth with me with me as well, because he's a wizard, and you know there are so many things that you can do with one of these 
wizard classes that I didn't want to control two at once. It would, it would just slow me down so much looking at all the spells. Let's... Damage, freeze damage and slowing their attack rate. Let's try that, but that'll hit me as well. That's the trouble. So let's let's try and just... Let's just try and hit the two wolves there. The big wolves. It's a shame we can't really see what's going on because it's... Uh, it's behind the tree line, but... Uh, we're getting a little bit damaged here. We need to actually start hitting these guys. Come on. Hey. Come on. There we Let's go. go. My my bear is uh is being very very good at just knocking down these wolves. So that's good. Always a good thing. Let's go. Bear beast wolf. Come on. This is taking far too long. This is in slow mode. That's the reason. Come on. Take it off slow mode. I think it automatically puts you in slow mode. Oh Almost. god, how many shots does it take? Do you just keep missing? Come on. Let's go. Uh, hey. Yeah. Let's try a pole axe. Come on. Let's go. Swing at him. Swing at him. There we go, finally. Good grief. Okay, so we're gonna get a lot of wolf hides from that. Okay. And Admeth's word, apparently. Now, okay, so is there a way to ch to change the difficulty? Yes, there is. Okay. So I can actually... Let's do a trial run. All right, let's let's switch it up to normal. And we'll, we'll just see what happens. We'll go from there. Difficulty changes will not take effect on any map you have not yet visited. Oh, no, they will take effect on any map you have not yet visited. So it won't take effect here. Which is a bit of a shame, but I suppose we'll see after after this, after exploring Magran's Fork. This is actually a smaller place than I expected. I've already covered that distance. But yeah, we'll we'll see shortly afterwards if uh, if normal is a, uh, a a more appropriate difficulty. Now let's see what we have over here. Old abandoned house and tower. It it seems. What's that? Whoa, what is that? Looks like a wisp from, uh, from Warcraft. Oh, oh shit, okay. Will of the Wisp, okay, great. Uh, I'm not sure what is the best way of dealing with a wisp. Should I, should I go bear on him? I don't know if a bear can, can damage a wisp. Let's try and knock it down. I really doubt that I can knock down a wisp, but, uh, let's give it a go. And I'll just keep this guy yeah. shooting from afar. Yeah. There we go. Ooh. Did that actually knock him down? It looks like that yeah. actually knocked him down. Whee. What what did it just do to me? Eight shock damage. Okay. I suppose uh I shouldn't be surprised that it does shock damage considering how it looks. But yeah, that was a Will of the Wisp then. Fairly easy creatures. I wonder if there's uh there are different uh uh kind of ranks of that creature. Like there's the young wolf and then the wolf and probably great wolf above that or whatever. So I wonder if there are even more powerful wisp creatures around that I'll have to encounter later on. What is that zero right there? I wanna know what that zero is. I I've just noticed that because it's kind of hidden behind the uh, the portrait uh, uh, frame. I don't know what that signifies. Ooh, hello. Ludrana. There, that one. Get that one. Well, that's not very nice. It's just because he's wearing the hat. Doesn't like him. Gold pack Paladin. And Ludrana. Hmm. Oh, look. That's a grimoire. So you are going to be a melee. Look, there's a dagger and a sword. So probably either a rogue or a bit too heavily dressed to be a rogue. So probably a warrior and then the mage. So let's try and knock down the mage. And I'll go bear 
on the uh, uh, the paladin. Whoa! What? What? <laughs> what's going on? Minaletta's minor missiles. One crush damage. Seven crush damage. Ouch! That was good. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so the knockdown worked. Knockdown seems to be a good thing to use on uh, uh, mages. Let's knock it down again. Come on. Ouch. Oh, shit. Wow. What the hell did it just do to me? Ouch. When a party member is reduced to zero endurance, they are knocked out. This means they're out of the fight, but as long as your side is victorious, they will regenerate their endurance when combat ends. Even though endurance regenerates after combat, health does not. Keep an eye on the bar to the left of the character's portrait to prevent them from becoming maimed or killed. Indeed. So what that means is uh, you can see that my portrait here is completely reddened out, which means they are unconscious. Their endurance has been reduced to zero. But their health bar, you can see, uh, his health bar is actually f still fairly full. So he's not in that much trouble. He's just been knocked out temporarily. So I, I, it must have been this necrotic lance that did that damage. Hits for 36 corrode damage. Additional effects for 6.3 seconds. Holy hell. Okay, so that was not good. That was even in bear form. Took me apart while I was in bear form. Okay, so this isn't great because now Edda is being flanked. So i got to finish off Ludrano as quickly as I possibly can. Oh, she just healed herself. What a bitch. Damn. Oh, I'm in trouble now. Uh, Alright, there's nothing much that Idir can do here. I really want my guy to get back up. I don't know if he does. Oh, that was a good hit, though. Come on, come on, come on. No. Okay, she's dead. I'm a bit damaged now, or Edir is a bit damaged because of those ghost blades. It's actually, it's kind of useful having it in automatic slow modes during a fight because you can actually see what happens in in the in the battles okay i think we're gonna win this we're, we're probably gonna win this battle there we go okay great and my guy should just get back up there we go and their endurance refills there we go okay great Whew. you know for easy mode that was actually fairly close to death <laughs> Uh, that, oh, that's nice. So 27 copper pieces there. Helm, mail armor, mm, 9 damage reduction, minus 45% recovery speed, and a great sword, slash and pierce. I might give that to Edir, maybe. I don't know. Hmm. No, actually, I won't, because hey. he has the sword and shield style, doesn't he? Uh... And I want him to, to keep the hunting bow as his second. When I unlock, you can un unlock these other weapon sets, so I can put a greatsword in, in one of those when I unlock it. But uh, for now, I shall leave it be. What is that? Affirmations of... Oh yeah, right, okay. I covered that last episode, didn't I? Um, okay, let's see what Ludrana has. Ludrana's grimoire there, and a wand that she was using. Which apparently does crush damage. I'm not sure how one does crush damage, to be honest. Padded armor. Ooh, that's actually fairly useful. I think I'll, I'll take that. I'll take the one because I can probably sell it. Ludrana's orders. <clears throat> it seems I have no choice but to provide you with instruction. Radric's forces are spread thin and the road through the wilds to the south of Gilded Vale lies unguarded. Given these favorable circumstances, I'm sure that even you can manage to handle a peasant or two. The archers tell me that Kolsk's, me uh, Kolsk's men made south after their escape. If you should happen to retrieve one of their number, I may be convinced to forgive your previous mistakes. For the last time, you are to keep clear of Defiance Bay. Know that if you cannot be, uh, be trusted to acquire a useful specimen with even a modicum of discretion, I have no calm qualms whatsoever about using what materials I have at my disposal instead. Signed, O. Hmm... Okay, so they were after Kolsk. And Ludrana evidently thought that I was... that we were a couple of Kolsk's men. And Kolsk is the one that's stirring up unrest against Radric up in Gilded Vale. 
So we have to keep out for this O character in Defiance Bay, I guess. So we'll have to remember that, make a note of that. Lujana's Grimoire, let's have a look. Wizards have the ability to learn a staggering number of spells, but they are always limited by the capacity of their grimoires. At any given time, a grimoire may, can, may only contain four spells of each level. Well, that's a pretty, pretty bloody large number of spells that you can carry around. Up to ten as well, so 40. 40 spells, good god. Click on a spell in the right panel to remove it from the grimoire. Add spells to empty slots by clicking on the spell in the left panel. So... All, all of the ones... Okay, so all of the ones that we have... Odyssey doesn't know Minna Letters Minor Missiles. If you erase it from this grimoire, you won't be able to scribe it again. I see, so... So, Ludrana knew how to cast these spells and so wrote them down in her grimoire. And because I now have the grimoire, I can recite them, but I haven't learnt them. So if I get rid of them, then I can't put them back in, I think, is what that means. Now, Necrotic Lance, that, that was the thing that killed me from, from like, full health. So I should certainly remember to, to use that when I'm in trouble. Fetid Caress. Wow, that sounds horrific. The target becomes paralyzed, afflicted with boiling pustules of foul-smelling liquid that erupt from their skin, sickening those nearby. Sickened? What does sickened mean? Sickened character has all attributes reduced by one, fortitude and will are reduced by ten. So a sick character is basically uh, just defenseless, essentially. They, they have less defense against mental attacks and physical attacks. So that's that's pretty cool and paralyzed. Uh, and I think these are, are just general kind of damage dealing, small damage dealing things. Although freeze and blinded, chill fog sounds really useful. So let's keep a hold of this, definitely. You found a new grimoire. Grimoires often contain spells that your wizards may not know. For a small cost, you can learn those spells from the description panel. You may also fill additional grimoires with different spells. Place them in your wizard's quick item slots to switch them, but be careful. Switching grimoires will temporarily lock wizards out of spellcasting for several seconds. So, okay, so just like uh, weapon sets, it takes a while for them to, to switch. But hold on, what did, what did it mean about... It said something about from your character screen that you can learn the spells. No, I don't want to erase it. How do I... Wow. I don't understand. I shouldn't have clicked done on that on that little thing. Oh, there we go. For a small cost, you can learn those spells from the description panel. As in the description of each individual item. So if I go onto here, ah, learn spell, I see. How much does that cost? Only wizards can learn grimoire spells. Does that also Oh, that's a shame. So my druid can't use a grimoire. Wow, that's disappointing. Okay. Fair enough. Well, sure. we can probably hand it to uh, uh, to Aloth when we next go into the Guild of Vale. Man, that's a shame. I really wanted to be able to cast Necrotic Lance on someone. Ooh, hello. Attack. Attack the deer. Let's get rid of this. That's taking up most of the screen. Uh, okay, so we've, I mean, we've made it through Magran's Fork, but, and we can go to Anslog's Compass, which is actually the place where Alphra wanted me to visit the, the woman who can seemingly uh, cure the Hollowborn disease, or at least prevent it from happening for one person. So we're definitely going there later. But for now, I, I definitely want to to explore this area properly, see if there's anything hidden around. So I have to be a bit careful because Edir's health is a little bit, a little bit too low for my liking. He's still got a decent amount of health, but he's my, my tank at the moment for all intents and purposes. He takes the brunt of all the damage. So I kind of want him to be at, at full health or at as full health as possible, really. Hello, this is the fork then. Hello. Saw you in the flames. Saw you in the flames? 
a statue of Magran, goddess of war and flame. Dozens of names have been scratched into, into the stone at her feet, supplicants seeking her blessing. What does it say? West to Gilded Vale. Wait. Yeah, west to Gilded Vale, south Ranslog's compass, and east to Black Meadow. East to Black Meadow. Black Meadow is going to be here then. So it goes Magran's Fork, Black Meadow, Kid Noir. Or I could go down to Anslog's Compass. Hmm. Well, we'll see. Let's talk to this guy. Squatting at the base of this statue is an incredibly ugly man, <laughs> with bulging red cheeks raked by pox scars and a scraggly beard. He is sweating as if he has a fever, but his breathing is measured and steady, like a slow push of a blacksmith's bellows, but that comparison feels strange and unwelcome. Well, isn't that kind of the point? <laughs> The next comparison possibly sparked by his grin is that of a bear trap, and then out of nowhere there is the hint of alchemical fire that fades almost as soon as you identify the smell. Come to pray at the statue. Holy shit. The question mark is barely there. <laughs> as the man makes the statement, the statue takes on a reddish cast, as if one is holding a torch to it, then slowly blossoms into waving flames. Ooh, just hit the uh, hit the pop filter there with my headphones, why not? Uh, the man doesn't turn as the statue blossoms into fire. Must be very used to this then. The others are welcome, but it's best if just you and I trade words, and your shadows stay quiet. Hands off their weapons, both arcane and steel. It's only you I want to trade words with anyway. His face tenses with his iron bear trap smile ready to spring. So he seems like a, a pretty dangerous character. I think, I don't know. I swear before the whore that is Margaret, <laughs> no harm will come to you in her shadow. If that's enough of a promise for you. If not... A staff rests easily in his hand. It wasn't there a moment ago. Yes, it was. I just, I saw it. It was always there. Magran, Magran, if I were a, a worshipper of this goddess, then I'd be able to talk to her, uh, talk to him in more interesting ways, it seems. But, uh... It seems like he's, he's almost threatening me to come and pray at this statue like he's uh uh indoctrinating people almost it is weird that he called what seems to be his goddess a whore that's a strange a strange choice of words let's examine the statue the, the weaving firelight from the statue gives off no heat so much so you wonder if it is some trick of the mind the ugly man before you doesn't seem to notice it or feel it, although the sheen on his brow is still present, as if he's burning up from within. Okay. Study the man. The sudden weaving flames from the statue of Magran cast more light on his features. The man's robes are dirty, stained with grease and other marks of the road. The hems of his robes, including the sleeves, are burned at the edges, as if he walked a great distance across a fire, then reached into the flames with his hands to pull something out. But while his hands are thick and callous, they bear no burn or scorch marks. Okay, focus your gaze on the staff. The staff looks thick, stout, of blackened ash once burned by a terrible fire. Beneath the ash, the lines in the wood bear shapes and patterns, and there is a certainty the staff was once something far more dangerous, but not now. How is that a certainty? How do you know that? Is that one of your watcher powers? As you study it deeper, it shimmers slightly in your eyes, like water catching the light weaving across the statue. Whatever power was bled from the staff, it doesn't make it, or it doesn't make it or the wielder any less dangerous. You look up to see the man watching you studying the staff. As his gaze meets yours, he nods with a humorless smile. Hmm, okay. Ah, uh, strange choice of company. Stone seems cold comfort. Or I didn't catch your name or why you want to speak with me. Or I have no need to trade words with you. <laughs> I'll say number seven. I didn't give it. You probably find names as useless as I do. The names that litter this world like debris are hard enough to wrap around the tongue. And what do they matter? Okay. It's what's beneath the skin and the letters I care about. What burns within. It's more important to me you're a watcher mm -hmm. than whatever culture or accent decorates your letters like awkward crowns. Take pride in your actions, not where you hail from. Or how your name rolls off whatever liar's tongue coats it now. 
He suddenly has a way with words, this guy. Also, he knows that I'm a watcher. That is very, very interesting. If you need a title to hang on me to match your own watcher, then call me Durance. And as you observe souls, I test them. Durance. Okay, great. So, uh, what do you mean? How did how did you come here? How did you know I was a watcher? I think we've traded enough words. Um, okay, well, let's ask the obvious then. How did you know I was a watcher? Durance shakes his head and his hand curls tightly on his staff. I can see the questions bubbling up. Let's burn them away one by one. I am a missionary. I walk this diseased nation with its heathen, its people so careless with the spirits of others and their own, watchers among them. Yes, I know you for what you are, and your name doesn't interest me. Names are for honest folk, and you are a crack that shines light from another place. Another place? We're meant to travel together, you and I. Saw you in the flames. Not your face, but that soul of yours. All tightened up, like a huntsman's knot. Hmm. Interesting. So it seems that unless this guy is a watcher just like me, then watchers aren't the only people who are able to see souls and uh, just be able to perceive that... Uh, what, what was it that the dwarfman's woman said? How did she phrase it? Like, see past the shroud... I think she said something like that. So, you saw my soul in the flames, and what is it you think you can offer me? I don't want your company. You saw my soul in the flames? There's things we can teach each other. If you're in need of answers to your mantle of questions, I don't force my words on anyone other than you. I don't care who walks with you or what their mewling problems and politics are. There's enough howling in the world without me stoking that fire. I won't take from your provisions, don't need much on the road. I can carry my weight, which is considerable. <laughs> okay. Um... Many will stand against you. They probably already have, from what I can see. Left their marks, it seems. Like a trail, worming its way behind you. Okay, what kind of marks? Disease? Spirit wind? Both could have touched you, yet here you stand. Spirit wind, so he knows I was attacked by a beerwick as well, or at least he thinks. He has an idea. As for disease, not all of us were close to water when the pox hit. But it's no longer a passenger in my flesh. It left its marks as well. But like flames, the pox doesn't strike twice, nor is it catching. Okay. Um... I don't know. Company would be welcome on the road. If your stone mistress there allows it, then come on. I have no need of your help. Uh, is th This guy must be a wizard, right? Must be a wizard, surely. So, I... Maybe if we... If we give him the grim... I mean, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that we could actually use that grimoire now if we invite him into our party. But again, it means that I'll be going through so many different spells with the druids and the wizards. So I don't know if I want another wizard in the party, another another, another spellcaster, quite yet, anyway. So I don't know. Let's, let's say I have no need of your help for now. No, actually, no, you know what? If your stone mistress there allows it, then come on. Her? Don't fear her jealousy. Let us see what the road holds, Watcher. A jealousy? Okay. Fair enough. End dialogue. And we now have him in our party. Endurance. Look at his endurance. He does not have mu uh, much endurance, does he? Endurance. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's uh, level him up right away. Oh, wow. Okay, so he has... A ton of lore and nothing else. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's... Let's give him even more lore. Some athletics, mechanics, 
don't care about survival right now. Let's give him a bit of stealth, uh, and then let's boost up another one like... Uh, mechanics, I think. That'll do. Okay, so class-based. Uh, what's this? Brilliant Radiance. Enemies take burn damage from the Priest's Holy Radiance. What? Hey! Oh, is Holy Radiance a spell? Yeah, modifies Holy Radiance. Foe AoE 9 to 13 burn. So, uh, I think it just amplifies one of the burning spells that we already have. Interdiction condemns the priest's foes, dazing any enemies in the area of effect. One per encounter, which is always nice. Dazed. What does dazed mean? Accuracy reduced by 10, dexterity, perception, and intellect are all reduced by 2, and attack speed is reduced by 15%. Okay, so it's not quite a, uh, a stun. Or, or how do they say it? A um, knocking them prone. It's not quite a prone, but it's uh, it means they they are more likely to miss, I guess. Inspired flame. The faithful of Magran gain an accuracy bonus with sword and arquebus, and can cast a special version of burst of summer flame. Okay, so plus ten accuracy with those weapons grants lesser burst of summer flame. One per rest. Uh, Twenty-two to thirty-four burn versus reflex. So it is just a an AoE burn damage spell again. It seems like this guy is just all about the burn. <laughs> okay, ag aggrandizing radiance. Everyone receives less healing from the priest's holy radiance, but the priest gains a bonus to all attributes and movement. So um, wait, what does holy radiance do? Area of effect, friendly target. Increases the and okay increases endurance of friendlies, and deals burn damage to foes caught in the area and frightens them. But increases friendlies endurance so minus seventy five percent minus seventy five percent healing received so that pretty pretty much negates this entirely, but it gives endurance a lot of a lot of stuff plus two to all attributes essentially, maybe, and I assume this is like the opposite. Allies gain an accuracy bonus from the priest's holy radiance. Modifies holy radiance, plus five accuracy. Uh, yeah. That seems more useful to me. I don't know. Uh, all of this stuff we already know. I don't know. Let's say... I... I kind of want to... I'm not going to give this guy a sword or an archibus. So let's give this guy the interdiction. One per encounter, that's pretty decent. Uh, and of course we level him up again, so let's give him some more lore, some more athletics, and some more stealth. Still not bothering with survival, don't need that yet. And we get a bunch of class unlocks, a bunch of different spells. Uh, interesting, iconic. Okay, we'll, we'll look at all of these in more in more depth later on. But for now, let's be on our way. And let's quickly change, make sure our formation is correct. Uh, let's, let's actually triangle formation. No, that's the opposite of what I want. I want... Hope you're not expecting much. Hold on. Get into the right formation. There we go, that's the right formation. Okay, great. Uh, now we still have to be a bit careful, like I said, because Edir is still our, our main tank, so we don't want him getting knocked out or anything, leaving our two uh, spellcasters to fend for themselves. Having said that, one of them can turn into a giant bear, so maybe we don't have to worry that much. Whoa, okay. Big Adra stone. Your reflection warps and twists in the live gleaming Adra. Ooh, dead body. Let's loot it. Fine greatsword. Fine means plus 4 accuracy and plus 15% damage. That is not insignificant. Definitely going to take that. I wonder if I, does it. if I sneak around here, is there anything interesting around? That seems to be the case whenever there's some sort of landmark of significance. They're probably going to... Ooh, what is that? It's a ghost! 
It's a ghost. Oh. That's definitely a ghost. And the ghost sees us, it seems. Hello. And it's it's gone now. Okay. Who sees us? I don't know. Probably the ghost. It probably glitched out a little bit there. But uh, in any case, it doesn't seem like there's anything around, hidden around. Although there is this little St. Giran's horn, apparently. I don't want nothing to do with St. Giran's horn. Is that something else? No, there isn't. I'm getting confused by by just the little little aesthetics there, the the little bits of Ooh, hello. Young wolf. I wonder how many of them there are. Yeah, I keep thinking those things are actually collectible uh flora, but apparently not. Now what does this guy have? Durance's staff. Sixteen to twenty two crush. Unique quarter staff two handed. Uh, plus 1.8 weapon reach, plus 25% burn damage. That's great. So, uh, ooh, what is this? Interdiction. Oh, that's the thing. The thing that I just gave him. And Holy Radiance creates a field of holy energy. So, yeah, burns any vessels in the vicinity and regenerates a modest amount of endurance for allies. That's pretty brilliant. One per encounter. We're going to be using that all the time. So, we don't need to cast any spells right now. Let's just attack. And let's let's tell Edir to knock the guy down. Uh. <laughs> the guy, <laughs> the wolf. There we go. This is going to be a very easy victory. That's a nice reach. See that? Durance can actually stand behind Edir and still hit him in melee with the staff. That's very useful. Of course. Big gnarly tree. I wonder if there's anything hidden around here. Come on, I want something hidden. I wonder if there are things hidden, but my perception or whatever it is isn't isn't high enough yet to notice. I think that's a that's a mechanic of the game as well. So it might be the case that I return here later on with a higher perception skill and uh, or concentration. Is it concentration or perception? I can't remember. Young boar. Not young wolf, young boar, okay. I assume these are going to be pretty much just as easy. Hey. Just in case, we're going to have Durance do his Holy Radiance. Okay. Uh-huh, that's one down. Oops, come on, click, click, click. Come on, it's just a boar. There we go. There's some nice power in that staff there. That does a decent amount of damage every every swing. Oh, actually, yeah, while I'm on that subject, let's give the grimoire to Durance. Quick items, right? I'm not sure how that works exactly, but uh, I guess we'll find out. Ooh, so I've got a poleaxe at the moment as my secondary weapon, but I should... Probably replace it with the fine greatsword. 19 to 27 slash and pierce. 16 to 22 slash and crush. Speed slow. Speed slow. Yeah. Yeah, we should definitely replace that. Uh, greatsword is definitely not going to be as good as the fine greatsword, so that seems pretty decent to me. Let's actually put the padded armor on him. Slightly less damage reduction, but it also means he attacks faster. How about Durance? He has a robe, which is very light. Minus 15% recovery speed. Yeah, you can definitely keep that. Uh, rod. What is this? 12 to 18. That's another two-handed weapon. 12 to 18 pierce and slash. 16 to 22 crush. But it has no special abilities or anything. Speed average. Speed slow. I feel like I might want to give him like something something different. What's in my stash? Maybe a crossbow or something. I do like having all of my characters with a uh, arranged alternative. But I'm not sure how, how much I'm actually going to use it. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, okay, so moving on. Where haven't I explored? 
add reformation there. There wasn't a way to go into the house or anything here, was there? Let's just quickly check that. Can we go in here? Oh, we can. Oh, brilliant. Uh, wow, this is a this is probably the smallest map that you will ever see in this game. Look at this. Just one tiny, tiny room. Vegetables and fruit. Hooray! And Goldrod Chew. Wow, minus 80 fatigue for 600 seconds. That's actually really decent. And a lockpick. Is there anything hidden around? Come on, please tell me there's something hidden around. Hey. Come on. Oh. What are these guys? Concentration, that is it. Okay. Uh. Or is. Actually, is it concentration? Hold on. C. Perception. No, I was right. It's perception. Okay, great. Um, so Perception 12, Perception 9, Perception 16, so my Druid has the best Perception, so he should be able to notice anything that's around. But it doesn't seem like there is anything, so I guess we'll just leave. That's a disappointment. But hey, at least we got Goldrod Chew out of it. Okay, and there was nothing in here, right? Just to double check. Stop. Okay. Anything around here? No. Doesn't seem like it. Oh, what? How did that? Oh, I didn't have. I didn't have my uh, highlight uh, interactable objects thing selected, so I didn't notice that. So I've got a lockpick and a hatchet. All right, fair enough. Well, that's that's nothing particularly special, but. That's uh, a little bit more to add to my my growing armory. I don't know how my guys can carry around all of this. All of this, this stash everywhere. Actually, it was less than I expected. But yeah, actually, all of this. And all of these weapons and all of this. <laughs> Insane. But that's always the case in RPGs, I guess. Now, how do I get down here? Is there a way through here, maybe? Yes, there is. Great. Otherwise, I'd have, I'd have had to go all the way around. Oh, shit. Okay, great. That's uh, that's big. That's Groot right there. I want to see his face. Actually, Forest Troll. That must be susceptible to fire. So, tell you what. Durance, what's your most fiery spell? Uh, what's in here? Divine Mark, inflicting burn damage and lowering deflection. That sounds pretty good. Repulsing seal. Repulsing seal. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh my god. That just conjures up such a funny image in my mind. Uh, 45 to 56. Okay, that that must be enough. That, that'll be so painful to him, surely. I hope I'm right in this prediction. Like, you would think it being a forest troll, it would be susceptible to burn damage. But let's see. Navarro. Come on, come on. What? Was that it? That did no damage. Hold on a second. Mm, Cast Divine Mark. Grazes. Oh, it grazed for 27 burn damage. Damn. That's so annoying. All right, whatever. Let's just... Keep keep attacking. Everyone keep attacking. Uh, try and knock him down again. Hey, I managed to knock down the big forest troll. That's great. Come on. Just keep walloping him. We got him. Why is why is Durance like taking the brunt of the damage here? We wanna move him away. Let's just have him chill. The others can take care of him. Come on. There we go. Great. Okay. Man, I'm so annoyed that that, that spell didn't hit. Troll skin. What does that do? 
Trollskin, where where are you, Trollskin? Trollskin. The hide of a troll is formed of what appears to be several layers of thin vines, plants, and mulch, forming a thick, nearly impenetrable skin. Oh, well, there you are. The, the key to an impenetrable skin is mulch, apparently. Good to know. I'm sure all of these are gonna, gonna be very, very useful in terms of enchanting and crafting and stuff. Ooh. Fulvano's Amulet of Reflex plus five healing bonus. Plus five Reflex, which is dodging. Plus 15% healing received. Healing of health or endurance is that. I don't know. This, this seems to be a kind of special item, so let's read this. Though ne never as famed as he would claim, the Valian explorer Fulvano was known as an eccentric who wished to see the world. Where possible, he travelled by foot to gain a local's appreciation for the sights, sounds and smells of the land he passed through. In practice, however, Fulvano often claimed that his explorations proved only, the, uh, only that the world outside of the Valian Republics was a foul, smelly place that paled in comparison to his homeland. This amulet is said to have belonged to Fulvano. He was a man much taken with mild superstitions, and this talisman, he said, was a source of luck. It also served more sentimental purpose, for it depicts one of the great ships commonly seen at the docks of his homeland. Well, he was right about the luck. I mean, reflex. That's, he was right about something. That is a lot of money. Chewed letter. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this piece of parchment is torn and flecked with blood and troll spittle. Three guesses were chewed on it then. What little of it remains reads, Worried he may have come to harm, once I reach Defiance Bay, I will hire guards to take me back west in safety and see if we cannot find Fulvano. At present, I regret my eagerness to be away from Gilded Vale. It is very dark. Wait, so what am I reading? I'm reading that... Fulvano has gone missing, and this person who had Fulvano's locket was searching for him, I guess, and he's lost somewhere in Defiance Bay. So when I, when I go to Defiance Bay, I have to keep an eye out for Fulvano the Explorer and, um, uh, da, 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 and O, whatever O is, whoever O is, who signed that letter. Actually, hold on a second. Once I reach Defiance Bay, I will hire guards to take me back west in safety and see if we cannot find Folvano. So he's not necessarily in Defiance Bay. Okay, I see. So let's just keep an eye out, I guess. Let's keep the chewed letter. And I believe that is everything in Magrun's Fork Explored. So the main thing is obviously finding Durance. That that is the uh, the key aspect of this entire place, found right there at the statue of my gran. At the statue of my gran. <laughs> so now we have to decide where we want to go. Either we go downwards to Anslog's compass, or we go right to uh, um, is it Defiance Bay? To the right? Is that what I said? Let's have a look. Come on. Durance is going his own way. Rebel. Why is he stopping there? Come on. You must gather your party Come on. Before venturing what? Forth. Come here. There we go. Great. Black Meadow. That was it. Okay, great. Um, Where? Which place do I want to go? Let's... I don't know. Tell you what, let's go to Anslog's Compass first. It'll take you six hours to complete your journey from Macron's Fork to Anslog's Compass. I wonder if that's going to fatigue any of my guys. I guess we'll have to see. Okay, it seems like we're at the beach now. Anslog's Compass. Actually, we can probably have a look in the journal. No, not the journal, the cyclopedia. Locations. Oh, it isn't here. That's a shame. Or lore? No. Actually, this is all really interesting. What's... what's... Berath's Wheel. Also known as the Wheel of Life and Life and Death, or simply the Wheel. Berath's Wheel is a metaphorical concept used to describe the collective churning of souls as they leave their bodies upon death, exit the world through pillars of Adra, and then are reborn in new bodies. Hmm. 
Very interesting. Uh, yeah, it doesn't seem like there's anything about where we are that I can uh, that I can look up, apart from going online, of course. But I don't want to do that. Hello, Tylian Eggdrang. <laughs> Eggdrang. That's a weird name. But uh, yes, I think these guys probably want to speak to us, but that will have to wait until the next episode. Because uh, I think I've been going on for just just coming up to an hour now. I might be slightly wrong about that, but this seems like as, as good a place as any to stop because we just conquered Magran's Fork. So yeah, in the next episode, we will hopefully be finding the, uh, the woman who can supposedly prevent the Hollowborn disease from, from occurring. And that'll be our main quest. So yeah, you have that to look forward to. Thank you very much for watching. I have been Odyssey, and I will see you next time. Bye.